evening, sir. Can I help you? Maybe I'm at the wrong house, sir. Why, I couldn't be. Uh, I was looking for Marching Friel's house. This was his house, but he's dead a long time now. Oh, uh, I thought that Abby might still live here. So she does. She's not at home then. She is. You're talking to her. Bobby, do you not recognize me? Uh, I don't think I do. Do you not remember the days we spent along the shore with the cockle shells and the golden castles? Do you not remember? Shimmy. Jimmy, is it really you? Good health to you, Marchant. As I was coming over, I saw a time broken of your window. You'll not have a sod of you by the morning. That young lass brought some storm with her the night she was born. A girl. Well, God bless her and God bless all inside this house and all belonging to us outside of this house in a day like this. Aye, Anna. A girl. Ach, sure you have to accept God's will. You know, I think the wind has eased down. Is I put out the St. Bridget's cloth? Ach, and who's the sweet lad? That's Podrick does and Shamey from across the road. So wouldn't you know the gal of her eyes? Oh, come on up to the fire and warm yourself, child. More Jean, give the child a drink. Young lad's like a drop. <laughs> ah, you're not much of a boozer, son. But here comes wee Maeve. She'll fairly enjoy a drop. I'm out searching for them devils and ducks that have been laid outside. I'm out looking for them in the snow and I'm blue with the cow. Somebody told me they were at the real stream yesterday. But when I got there, I found neither sight nor sound of them. I thought that since I was passing, I'd drop in and see the child. Well, bless the youngster. May my eyes not do her any harm. Isn't she the makings of a beautiful woman? Of course. She didn't steal that, she didn't. She didn't have far to go for the beauty. Shall have you wanted them, Sir Flower? I'd a drink this, maybe it'll warm you up. Not a drop will dampen my breath, God bless you, Marching. Honestly, it's not that I wouldn't want to drink to the baby's health or anything, but you see... I took the pledge when the priest was in Dolan Adams last Halloween. So that wee drop won't break the pledge. Drink it, woman. I can't. I'm not allowed. I can only take drink as medicine if I were sick or the legs. And sure, aren't you full of pains? Drink it, woman. Well, I know that you mentioned it. I am full of pains. I got a phone then when I went to go door for the home spoons. And sure, even the devil himself would get a cold this winter. Compared to any winter I remember, if this year's cold gets a grip of you, nothing will bring it out of your bones. Ah, nothing except a drop of the stuff. Drink it, Maeve. If you say so, Martin, there's no arguing with you. Chatty's later. Well, isn't she the shameless scrounger? It's his fault. If I had the glass and she refused it the first time, I wouldn't offer it again. Sure, I know the kind of heart. 
And if I didn't force her, she'd cut us to the bone. Nobody wants a tongue lashing from her. Ach, would you wish? Go over there to the fire and take a poker tate. And while you're at it, take out a solid turf for the child's crystal rope. Don't let them do that. You'll burn her. Oh, darling child, no. It'll protect her until she's baptised. Sure, you know the fire is blessed, and it'll keep her safe. If we don't, the fairies might steal her and leave another just like her in her place. And then she'd be theirs and not ours. I can more to see the baby. Granny told me you had a baby the night of the storm. What's her name? Her name is Bobby Wharton. Sit down here and I'll show her to you. God, she's so small. Can I hold her? She's not a weight, nor size, nor even a wee hand to move. It would be a long time before she puts buttons or floats cockleshells in her tide. Aye, she could learn a lot from a big man like yourself, Shamey. In no time at all, she'll have caught up with you. And you never know, one day she might be your woman. <laughs> I know what lies before you You never know what's through the door What treasures life will show you If you could see your destiny Visualize the future You could not change What's meant to be Or alter the course of time Shamey, can I come to the wedding? Ah, don't be embarrassing <laughs> the boy Oh, he'll have a different tune one day Mark my words He won't be running for the door when women are mentioned I've seen the likes of him before <laughs> <laughs> other in the skies. That's them whistling. Can you hear them blowing their horns? That's them shooting at each other. <laughs> Shouldn't you all be at home in your beds instead of listening to the wanderings of an old woman? Granny, tell us a story with fairies or ghosts in it. Some horrible, scary story. And then they'll go home. Aye, and your parents will be after me for the sleepless nights they'll all be having. Oh, 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 all right, don't fight. Well, what one will I tell you? Would the one about two sheep gone there do? It will not. Them old witches with their scrawny grins. <laughs> <laughs> it serves you right. Well, I'll tell you the one of the princess of the Golden Mountain. Yeah. Uh, I don't like that story. It was far too sad. Just when you thought he'd won his prize, he lost it again. Well, that's how life can be, children. Actually, why did he stay the next? That's where all the trouble was. Well, there's no telling people what they should do. They'll do it their own way anyway. Hey, it's finished stories. And still there's no place in this. Monsters, which witch you see, which of you frightens them most? But when you moon in your bed, you see spectres right over your head. And if you lie awake, they'll be trying to take your soul away from you. I'll tell you a fable, and you'll be unable to move away from your seat. Of a girl so pretty in the flaming city, her hero, the giant he beat. But when you're alone in your bed, you'll see flames right over your head. You breathe in smoke, you'll be starting to choke the life right out of you. I'll tell you a tale that'll leave you quite frail of the king of the mountains of gold. How he had a daughter who ended up slaughtered a 
as a hero was reaching his goal. But when you're alone in your bed, you see things just right over your head. And you try your best, but you open your chest and take your heart from you. Granny, story of an extraordinary reason's far back. Ah, blessed Mary, see my dilemma tonight with the children. You saw what your own stories. I'll tell you a story, just the one story of creatures that come out at night. I'll tell you of rats that eat living cats and kill dogs without even a fight. But when you're alone in your bed, you'll see rodents right over your head. And if you fall asleep, they'll be starting to eat your legs away from you. But when you're alone in your bed, you'll see vampires right over your head. And if you lie awake, they will still try to take your blood away. tell stories. You have them children ruined. Not one of them has as much as opened a book or done any homework this evening. Their heads are full of stories and old nonsense. As if your stories will do them any good when they have to head up the back of that eagle. Ach, Mammy, let her tell one more story and I promise I'll learn my lessons every night from now on. There'll be no more stories as if you're going to learn anything either way. Shamey got a pasting from the master today because he didn't hear his name called in English roll. Well, that old master's an Amadan. Do you not remember the day he fell asleep in class and when he woke up from the noise of the children, he picked up Padaro's son and took the strap to him. But the young lad lifted his right and slit and split the master between the two eyes. I got to the queen off the heart today when the master asked me. Not like Shamey. <laughs> It'll be a long time before Shamey can say that. No, Sarah. Aren't you awful hard and poor, Shamey? And isn't he the best prospect of a man you have? <laughs> In ten years' time, you look back and wonder what all that old fuss was about. I don't know about that. He's are keeping me from my work. These stockings should have been done ages ago. There'll be no food on the table if they're not at the dolly shop in the morning. Shimmy, Shimmy, your mammy's always cross with you. Did you get any slaps today, Shimmy? I did not, Bobby. Come on, I can see the marks of tears on your face. Shimmy, what kind of houses are those over there at the bottom of the sky? They're the golden castles where the fairies live. So my granny told me when I was your age. Golden castles. She says over there the sun always shines and nobody ever grows old. It looks magical. Wish we had a boat to go there. Shimmy, could you steer the boat, Shimmy? Ah, of course I could, Bobby. Now watch this. Here's our boat and we'll sail it across the bottom of the sky.
Have you seen Carol since he came home? I did, surely. I sure what am I saying? Of course she did. That Carol act will put you to law, Shimmy. If you stay with him long enough, you'll end up a gambler too. Now, he doesn't come home that often. So there's no point giving out about him. Here, chuk, 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 chuk. Here, chuk, 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 chuk. Oh, speak of the devil. I'll get no work done tonight either. And I wouldn't mind, but the night they picked to come, and me with so much to do. And now listen, put away those stockings and make Carol welcome. So you know he's only just come home. And we didn't go to bed yet, huh? No, no. <laughs> come in, Carol, you're welcome. welcome. Ah, we're coming late. I hope we're not putting you out. Oh, not at all. Sure, me and Bobby were only fixing some stockings to to Dally's shop in the morning. Right, Jimmy. Then me in. Oh, my God, Frank, get us on the eve side, Bridget. Don't forget you're here to make crosses, not gamble the night away. <laughs> Gee, Bridget, come on, come on. Your mother wouldn't like to hear you talking like that. Right, lads. 25, is it? Sit in there, Michael. Right, 25 is the latest. Make the draw. Bobby. A few drinks for the man. You'll not touch a drop of alcohol in this house on the eve of St. Bridget. Bobby, yourself and Shimmy go out to the well. And while you're at it, get a bucket of fresh water for the tea. Shimmy, would you go on? For God's sake, would you quit your old push rug and get us a drink? So, Carol, I suppose you're glad to be back home from Scotland. I am. You know, it's great to be home. And you've been away for a while, especially. And sure, what with Mother being on her own now, there's no one else to look after. What choice do I have? And how is your mother these days? Oh, she's not bad. But to be fair, I feel the years are getting a bit the better of her. Bobby Warchenice. Well, haven't you grown up since I saw you last? The last time I saw you, you were you were still down in the shoreline playing them cockles, cockle shells, was it? Dreaming of sailing to where was it now, Bobby? Was it the castles of gold or something? <laughs> what was it like in Scotland? You can't cut away. Bobby, is that tea not ready yet? Uh, you mentioned Padre Godali's name earlier. Don't tell me that man's still ripping off the women of this parish. What do you mean, ripping them off? Sure, isn't that obvious? He gives them practically nothing and sells on their stockings with a tidy sum in his back pocket. Isn't that right, Babby? He's as bad as some of them English landlords who charge us an arm and a leg to live on our own land. He's the only difference is O'Dally lives amongst us. How you can't mean that. He's as bad as his father before him. And them like him who did nothing to help the local people, starving to death with a potato blade. Oh, no. Oh, those boys made their money on the back of poor people suffering. Some of them are more English than any of the planted landlords. There'll be no talk like that in this house. Well, aren't you the fine one to be talking? And you just back from earning the Queen's money? Back here with your fancy English tongue. And you all the time gadding about the place over there. Did you ever think of your poor and mother? Well, I'm back now, I'm in there. And there'll be no workhouse for my mother. She'll have a roof over her head till the day she dies. But mark my words. There's many an Irishman doing more damage to his own people and causing them more suffering. And what are you doing about it? Nothing. We work hard. We don't go running off at the first sign of trouble or hardship. We stick together through thick and thin. Now, now, uh, Father godali has been very good to this family and other families in the parish. And sir, look at what he does for the church. The church? The only reason you see Padre Godali ferrying every priest in the country around is that he thinks he'll be certain of a place in heaven. Some chance.
right, lads. We'll have to finish it there. Shall we still have St. Bridget's crosses to make for morning? Uh, union are in superstitions. It's no wonder Ireland is as backwards as it is. Well, you never get sense. It's not superstition at all. And I'm afraid you lost all your faith over yonder in Scotland. Faith? It'll be a long time before you see me under the thumb of the church. I'll leave you to it. Good night to you. He's coming, lads. <clears throat> Good night to you, Bobby. Well, that Carawa would try your patience. Could you imagine if our Bobby ended up with a man like that? I'd rather not. Anyway, marching. Speaking of man, I hear the schoolmaster is a bit of a graph for our Bobby. And wouldn't she have a great start in life with his master's salary? Maybe I should have a word to wee Maeve to see if she can arrange a match of them. Aye. Well, may God forgive the shower of sins that came out of that young rascal's mouth. Imagine speaking of his church in that manner. Father O'Donnell would have a fit if he overheard. I imagine, and under the roof of a good Christian family, it's talk like that that brings bad luck in a community. Let me tell you, Father O'Donnell will have his work cut out for him trying to bring that car work back to the faith. I hear he never knelt in front of a priest since he left here. God only knows what he got up to over there in Scotland. Oh, should I try to think? That place is overrun with devil worshippers. Oh, give him time. He'll come round. Ah, ladies, would you stop the gabble? We have crosses to be making for the morning. My throat's as dry as these rushes. <laughs> but you'd need to watch that cattle on your bobby. I wouldn't give that much my blessing. You were saying something about the new schoolmaster and your bobby?
And to the fine looking woman by me, Marchie. <laughs> the likes of you haven't been seen around this shop for a long time. <laughs> Come on now, be nice to me. So where would you and your lot be without me? You've ruined the rip part of these stockings, Captain Connell. Your work isn't much better, Siobhan Fergal, than your souls, and me keeping you in money. Do you think I'm going to pay for this rubbish? They'll all have to be ripped. What's wrong with them? They're the same as I always do. They're all ruined. They'll have to be ripped. Well, well, I won't be the one to rip them anyway. <sighs> And Marcin's daughter, the chick to talk to me like that. And he in the own shop, too. Me keeping them for years. Tramps. They would have been a poor house long ago if it wasn't for us. Mr. O'Dally, how much will I get for my work? You shouldn't be getting very much this day. Three and eleven. That's all it's worth. Do you want it in money or the worth that in goods? I'd rather take the money this time, please. Oh, aye, uh, surely. Aye. Uh, and go and spend it in somebody else's shop. It's not that. Mommy says we have to buy clothes for the child to go to the doctor. Uh, and we haven't a halfpenny. She is afraid to leave it any longer. We got three letters from the doctor, and he warned that she was to bring him in by Thursday. Many's a way and better than yours went to the doctors in rags. But if your mother wants to doll him up, I'll send for the clothes. They'll be here by Thursday, but I want the back made. Hey. God bless you. I work for you. You were always very charitable. <clears throat> what do you want? Money, I suppose. A stone of Indian me. What? Half a stone. Get on there. You're lucky to be getting anything this day. I get out of my way. Well, he was as angry as the devil today. I'm dealing with him a long time, but I've never seen him like that. But sure, is it any wonder? Did you ever see such a thing to happen as to slap a gentleman across the face? You'll be murdered when you get home, Bobby Watch. He should have left me alone. You had no need to go that far. She could have laughed it off. And that's all there would have been about it. Sure, it isn't hard to be nice. God, he was only fooling. There's no point biting off the hand that feeds you. If you had a bit more manners, you wouldn't be going home empty-handed today. Oh, God, not him now. Who? The new schoolmaster. My mother's been trying to match me up with him for weeks. Good afternoon, ladies. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. What a lovely day. I trust you're all well. Very well, Master. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Bobby, I thought I'd see you down here today. Was there something you wanted? Yes. I wanted to talk to you about our arrangement. Our arrangement? There's no arrangement as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, you should be talking to your own kind. Oh, but come now, Bobby. I can make you my own kind. Not, not that I want to change you or anything, but you know education and learning is the only way forward. I'm sure my, my heart lifted when I saw you. Look at your poor hands from that rough yarn. You shouldn't be thinking about the hiring fair up in Letterkenny. You're much too headstrong for the kitchens in those big houses. Now, Bobby, stop this nonsense. Think of the life you would have with me, schoolmaster's wife. Many's a girl would be delighted with the title. As for those two friends of yours, I'm sure they'd be madly jealous of you. And your mother and father, sure, I only hinted to your mother the other day and she flushed with pride. Almost tripped over herself as she scuttled off to tell the neighbours. And I'm sure she'll tell me if you know what that means. There are not too many places that still hold the matchmaker in such high regard. Maybe, 
Maybe I should talk to me. Go ahead. Talk to whoever you want. Oh, but just stay away from mine. Anyway, you should be talking to your own kind. Not the likes of us trying to earn a living from the Queen's netting. Oh, but Bobby, you're my Queen. You're my Queen. families. The bailiffs and soldiers are in the area. They've wrecked two houses already and they're on their way up to Betty Shields's. Oh. Jesus, Carowahal, kill them if they come near them. Come on now. God save us all. Did you say something, Mother? Ah, oh, I'm so weak, Yahashka. I can hardly see you. Shh. It's all right. Sure isn't God himself among us this morning. Rest easy. Shh. Carol! Carol! The bailiffs and soldiers are in the area and they're heading right this way. Carol, the wrecked shot in Whaler's house already. They've cleaned it from wall to wall and the poor Wales. Carol, it's terrible. Ever since the landlords put up the rent last month, Nobody can afford to pay. So how do they expect us to pay? Through the winter months and this bloody weather. Nothing grows. Not even the animals. How are we supposed to pay or live at all? And listen, go home to your own house. There can be trouble yet. Go on. I'm taking possession of this house in the name of the Queen.
Randolph, it's terrible. There's a rumor going around that Father O'Donnell's to be arrested. Arrested? Aye, for what he said about the landlords and the rent increases from the pulpit yesterday. We're going to have to do something about it if it happens. What will we do without Father O'Donnell? People of the parish, today we celebrate the funeral mass of Betty Shields. You are arrested in the name of the Queen. I see that what I heard is true. I'm wanted for my words, not what I do. It appears that speaking out against the owners of our land has now become a crime. I just don't understand. Now the landlord sends his army out for me to this chapel where everyone can see. Go home, you must not stay here. Nothing will be gained, you cannot interfere. I think that he is giving good advice. We should move over here, don't think twice. It wouldn't look so good, it would not be right. After getting absolution, to get into a fight. A fight! Evening. It's as peaceful down here as when we were children. Do you remember we'd be down here floating our sailing boats? <coughs> Wasn't as peaceful the night you fell in and got soaked to the skin? I did <laughs> not. You pushed me. I did not. Do you mind? We couldn't let your mother know we were down here. We hung your pinafore in that branch over there and she bellowed in the one like Pather's boat in full sail. And I left you to the door and ran. <laughs> always looked after me, Shamey. Do you remember the day Sweeney's bull chased after me? And then you ran after it with your shirt in the air. And the next day, we well, may have told your mother, I was running through the fields naked, and you <laughs> after me. <laughs> I'd forgotten that. You were what, 17 then? And do you remember what you told me in them same fields a few months later? I do. That was the day after I thought I'd never see you again. The night before, you and Pater got caught in the rocks in that awful storm. And the next day, when we sat by our tree, we didn't want to leave each other. Nothing could touch us when we were together. And as we talked, we realized how much of our lives we actually spent together. Do you remember the cockle shells? Golden castles. Do you remember when we were much younger? We float cockle shells on the tide. We'd often gaze at the skyline with wonder as we'd stand on the shore side by side.
me anymore. I'm here. Look, I mean work. I'll go to Scotland. Earn me fare to America. When I made some money, I'll send for you. And when we've had our full of loving out there, we'll come back here and end our days along the shore. The nicest place on earth. America? Will you send for me? Where will I find you? Oh, Shimmy, don't go. I have to go. <laughs> Bobby? You won't forget about me when I'm gone, will you? You know I won't forget you, Shimmy. I'll be here waiting to hear from you every day. And when you send for me, I'll sail in my boat to you. There will be better castles before us. We won't sail to them. Won't you be with me, here by my side, with me forever, always together? Won't you be with me, each day and night, to share every together we must never part i live my life knowing that our love is growing as i live the future oh won't you be with me won't you be with me when the world is enough when the joy of my heart won't be in sorrow won't you be with me when the sun doesn't shine to brighten Change what's meant to be 
our altered in course of time. So leave your thoughts behind you, accept what's there for you. Just take a look around you and watch your dreams come sequence like the seasons you never know if anything will happen without reasons the fantasies of memories could prejudice the future you could not change what's meant to be or alter the course of time your thoughts behind you, accept what's there for you, just take a look around you, and watch your dreams come true. so leave your thoughts behind you, accept what's there for you, just take a look around you and watch your dreams come a place to be, hey? Are you joking? Will you look at them? Al came over here 40 years ago to earn their fortune. What's changed for them? Nothing. You wouldn't know whether you're in Scotland or still back in Donegal. And to think what I left behind. Don't be like that, Shimmy. There's lovely lassies here, hey? Lovely. Come on, man. Forget the past. We'll dance! Yeah, come on, we'll dance! Look, more music, man!
dejected and lonely, wishing your true love was near. But I'm appealing, you think of her only, you won't find the answers in Just let me tell you how I went astray When I first met the love of my life But how could I know what would happen that day She cut through my heart like a knife Shimmy, sit down here beside me till I give you a bit of advice. My advice to you, Shimmy, and to anyone that wants it, is not to let a drop of that cursed drink along the byways of your breath for as long as you live. Here's my story. I once loved a woman called Lulaban. Her eyes were as blue as the sea. Her face with looks that outshone the sun was the face of an angel to me. The first time we met, one morning at dawn, I was walking along the seashore. The look in the eyes of sweet. I never had witnessed before But the start of my downfall Was one winter's night When a rebel convinced me To join in the fight Of the tenants against the landlord's stand On the hills near Glenfin, we were armed and we never knew fear. But when we discovered a spy from within, we were scattered both far and near. But a soldier from Clahundu picked up my trail. And soon I was exiled to an old English jail Where I spent every moment while serving my time With just Lula Bon on my mind After five years with my sentence complete I boarded a ferry for home and as I walked down to the end of our street, I pictured her there on her own. She'd be standing there waiting, or that's what I thought. But she married that soldier by whom I'd been caught. And with anger, revenge, and Rage in my head, I find comfort in drinking instead. Now, shame me if I can give some advice. Don't go the way I have gone. And if you
Michael, I've made up my mind. I'm going to America. I promised Bobby I'd send for her. I can't go home empty handed. Besides, there's no fortunes to be made here. Sure, I'll go with you. <laughs> they say you can dig up gold in the soil in the Yukon. <laughs> Imagine that, eh, Shimmy? Digging up gold instead of turf. <laughs> uh, you and Bobby can have your big day in America. And I'll be your best man. <laughs> I found gold! I found gold! Oh, no. From 1896, three of them from way down south in Rabbit Creek were mining. Oh, no. oh, no.
Where is he now today? If only she had married long ago, she wouldn't be here all alone. If only she had married this, I know she'd have made her house a home. I know that Donald Mava asked for her hand, but just like every other man in the land, she said that she was promised to her first love. But who is she thinking of? Perhaps she may Far off land. I doubt if he is thinking of anyone at home, cause he had a wife of his own. If only she had married long ago, she wouldn't be here all alone. If only she had married this, I know she'd have made her house a home. Bobby Barchi, is it you? I'm sorry if I frighten you this hour of the night. You don't even recognize me, do you? It's me. Karawa. Ah, oh, Karawa, <laughs> it's good to see you. Sit down. Where have you been? Oh, I should only God knows where I've been. Oh, it was terrible that you had to leave so quickly after the incident at Mean Another Chapel. And to think, you couldn't even attend your own mother's funeral. I don't think I'd ever forget that, Bobby. Or the man that caused it. Karawak, you're not involved in anything that would bring you more trouble, are you? I'm involved, all right. But what would you expect? Bobby, after what's happened here, and the rest of Ireland, it's do or die now. Ah, Karawak, I'm sure you're glad to be back all the same. I don't know. I don't know how I've been, Bobby. It's great to see the old place. But it's sad to see so many of the old people gone. A few years can bring many changes. Seems a lifetime since we played on those rocks and chased wee Maeve's ducks till she was near demented. <laughs> she wasn't she always demented. Ducks or no ducks? Well, she fairly wore my parents off you. Oh, but you'd need to watch that Karawak and your Bobby. <laughs> I wouldn't give that much my blessing. <laughs> I wonder what you give it now. Bobby? Oh, I might as well put 20 words in the one. I, I came back. For you, that is if you'll have me. Oh, I've kept that secret for such a long time, Bobby. I just had to tell you. That's why I came back. Karawak, you don't know what you're saying. You're better off without me. I'm no match for any man. I don't say that, Bobby. How many nights was I lying down in a ditch or under a tree where I would have gladly died, Bobby? But you, the thoughts of you kept me alive. You've been a good friend to all of us, and I'll never forget that till the day I die. But I can't marry you, Karawak. And promise to another man. Well, whoever he is, he's a very lucky man. Sure, might as well tell you the whole story now. The man is Shimmy Patrick Do. Shimmy? Shimmy never said a thing. And not so close. So there's no better man than Jimmy. So where is he now? 
Oh, he hasn't been heard of here in years, and God knows maybe he'll never come back. He was to send for me when he got to America, you know. I would like to think you're not having to put out Jimmy. Many's the day myself and Jimmy were away together. And God knows he spoke about you often. But he never said there was anything between the two of you. Ah, oh, Bobby, I wish now he had. I would never have come back here. Ah, oh, Carla, I'm glad you're back. Ireland has lost too many of its young men. Now, don't go away wasting your life again. Will you do that for me? Bobby, are you sure you're doing the right thing? I mean, here, waiting, hoping. You've said yourself, a few years brings many changes. She may have seen a whole new world by now. He didn't send for you, Bobby. Leave it alone, Carla. Oh, look, I didn't mean to upset you. Sure, we can still be friends, can't we? We can, and you'll always be welcome here. Now come inside, you must be starving. We'll have a cup of tea, and you can tell me what you've been doing all this time. <laughs> That's the house down there. It's a safe house for all types of criminals. Are you sure, Mr. O'Dally, that the man wanted for the attack on Colin Barracks is there now? Oh, he's there, all right. And he's been involved in more than Colin Barracks. So years ago, when he was only a young fella, he killed one of yours at Green Miller Chapel. He's there, all right. Shopkeeper O'Dally, anyway. We'll waste no more time here. Come on, we'll go. Wait, wait. We may as well burn the place down. If there's nobody here now, they'll not be again. Go. Jesus Christ. They're burning the house and Bobby's locked inside. Sure, what, what can we do? They'll run anyone who's near the door. We can't fight them. Ask someone to take a chance to save Bobby.
are you? Good evening, Siobhan. Isn't it a sad day for Clan Dove now that poor Padraig O'Dalic has died? Oh, indeed, it's not before time. I'm sure he had a big funeral. Oh, there wasn't a priest nor a gentleman from Derry to Killybegs that wasn't there. Sure he had plenty of money. He was very generous to the poorer families, God rest him. And he is supposed to have left a fortune of money to the church. Well, it would have fit him better to have left it to us poor women that used to do the knitting for him. Sure we were never half paid. Indeed, Padraig O'Dally's not the great man everyone said he was. Are you going a bit far there now? Padraig O'Dally was a good Christian man, and you cannot deny that. Sure, he gave £5,000 to educate the children of the parish. And look at the stained glass window he put into the chapel in Clahondo. Well, I still think he was overpraised. Sure, only last week a poor man was laid to rest in Mina Nurler, and not a word was said on his behalf. Well, what man are you talking about? Oh, Sure, a fine man, a rare breed, a man whose house was burnt down twice in his lifetime and who watched his mother die without a priest's blessing or confession on an evening just like this. Sure, he fought and worked for his country and he died saving a woman from a fire. Oh, he's buried in a corner of the graveyard up there with just a small bundle of stones to mark his grave. And on the day he was buried, there was barely 30 people at the funeral. There was no sermon made about him. Sure, he didn't need one anyway. What men are you talking about? Oh, Charles Shields, better known locally as Karouac Vetti. I know that man. I saw him getting off the train at the station this morning. That's Shamey Padre Dove. I thought he was in America. And doesn't he want us to know it? Would you look at the set of that? He wasn't dressed like that when we waved him from these shores. I heard he struck it lucky in America. He struck gold, they say. Lumps of this stuff, like sods of tough, real gold. Oh, Maya, sure the only gold we ever knew was the castles of gold in the horizon of the evening sky. Do you remember himself and Bobby? He used to sit for hours on the shore watching, just watching, dreaming, just dreaming. Oh, fat lot of good that did, Bobby. Sure she still only has her dreams. I bet you that's where he's heading now. Oh, good evening, sir. Can I help you? Maybe I'm at the wrong house, sir. Why, I couldn't be. Uh, I was looking for Marching Friel's house. This was his house, but he's dead a long time now. Oh? I thought that Babby might still live here. So she does. She's not at home, then. She is. You're talking to her. Babby, do you not recognize me? I don't think I do. Do you not remember the days we spent along the shore with the cockle shells and, and the golden castles? Do you not remember? Oh, Shimmy. Oh, Shimmy, is it really you? It is me. Oh, come in, come in. I passed by the home place on the way over. Nothing left standing but a few walls. You would think someone would have made a home out of it. Sit down. The place looks so different. We had a fire. Oh, what happened? Oh, God, it was terrible. That night, Kerouac was here, and the black and tans came, and they torched the place. The neighbors did what they could, but as you can see, there wasn't much left. Shimmy, that was the night the Kerouac died. Yeah, I heard he had died. Sorry to hear that. Poor guy. Many's a good game of cards we had in this house. That seems like a lifetime ago now. <clears throat> Those were the good old days. And to think, 
He gave his life to save me. Do you live here alone? What? Alone? Aye, there's three of them in America now. Manus died and Michael's married and living in Loch Inur. It's a wonder you never met any of them in America, Shimi. America is a big place, baby. It's, it's nothing like Clohendu. And you say Michael's married now. Why, why he, was, he was just a child when I left home. What about Donica Moore and, and Owen Rua? They died a long time ago, too. Is there anyone left at all? I'm here. It'll be late when I get back to Clondu. Are you back home to stay, Shamie? I couldn't stay in the Rosses now, Bobby. Not after all this happened. It, I was a fool to think that everything would still be the same as it was before I left. But, Shamie, what about the cockle shells and the golden castles? It's in another lifetime, Bobby. It seemed then like like we had our whole lives planned together. We'd move back here and end our days along the shore. It, it was to be our destiny. But it hasn't turned out that way. I guess we can still at least be friends. It's late. I won't impose on you any longer. I'll see myself out.
Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the new Irish musical Cash Lenore, performed by Making Waves Productions.